make us start this afternoon, um, as we're on two o'clock. So, uh, welcome to open up to today's uh, Transport uh, Committee. Uh, can I ask, have we had any apologies for absence? Yes, Chair, we've had apologies from Councillor Paul Hayes and Councillor Christopher Rowe. Councillor Kidley, I think, uh, is also uh, not able to be with us today. We can record his apologies. Apart from that, is, is everyone else with us? Looks to be. Okay. Uh, second item, which is declarations of interest, obviously, is for, for me to um, uh, make the point that if there are any issues either now that you're aware of or at any time during the meeting, if you can uh, raise those accordingly, and we can make sure that those are recorded uh, appropriately. And third item is the minutes of the last meeting. So I can, can I move that the minutes that we've got from the 9th of August be approved as a correct record? Natalie? Thank you, Chair. If I recall clearly, uh, pages 11, where I raised the point about the um, diagram with the woman with the pram going downhill instead of uphill, I, I thought the officer said, um, she would um, she would feed this back and get it get it altered. But here it says um, feed this back to the originators of the image. It doesn't say about getting it altered. Yeah, that, that's fine enough that we can pick that up. I think that particular um, infogram uh, was part of the corporate plan that was then appended to the the Mersey Travel accounts. But yeah, we can make sure we, we change that accordingly because uh, we made sure that the bus was going uphill. So let's make sure that the pram is going up and also. Okay. Apart from that, can I sign those as an accurate record of what happened on the 9th of August? Do we agree? We agree. Excellent. Okay. And the fourth item, we've got colleagues from Network Rail in who are going to give us a presentation. We've got Patrick Gordon and we've got Marcus Barnes. So, uh, Patrick, Marcus, if you want to go to the front and take us through here. Presentation and we'll have some, some questions from the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your very kind invitation to uh, Netmorel to invite us on today to talk about the Liverpool Lime Street major upgrade programme. Um, I don't <coughs> think for a minute that you will have uh, failed to have noticed the fact that we closed Lime Street Station down for six weeks uh, in the middle of the summer. Um, quite a bit of disruption and obviously we, uh, we were hugely grateful uh, to the people of Merseyside for bearing with us whilst we completed what were a very challenging, complex, well ultimately very successful uh, package of works to operate the Lime Street Station and all the signalling controls and equipment therein. Um, part of a £160 million investment from the Great uh, North Rail Programme uh, and part of the 350 million investment um, in the Liverpool city region uh, that the industry and yourselves are making over the current control period. So it was a significant piece of work which brings additional capacity, more trains, more seats uh, for, for our customers, uh, for the people of Merseyside, and greater connectivity when we finally get the benefits of the new timetables which will come in 2019. Uh, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Marcus Barnes. Uh, Marcus was the sponsor for the project, the senior sponsor for the project, so he knows a lot about the detail. Marcus will talk uh, some more about how we delivered the project, some of the challenges, how we overcame them, and ultimately the benefits that the project brings to the Liverpool City region. And then, if we've got time, which I'm sure we have, we'll take as uh, any questions that you'd like to ask us. Okay, over to you, Marcus. Thanks, Pat. <coughs> As Pat said, I'm just going to give you an update on the major works that we've been undertaking at Liverpool Lime Street. Yeah. So, um, as you may or may not know, we undertook uh, the first phase of uh, the works back in um, October 17, where we had a three week engineering access at the station. That was successfully completed on time, uh, and that was being a great success. So, we moved into the second phase, which is a significantly bigger. A piece of work uh, which commenced at the beginning of June uh, for eight weeks and concluding on Monday the 30th of July. Now this, this second phase, uh, as you see on the key stats, um, delivered um, a significant amount of work. Um, it involved 5,000 of our colleagues. 
way to deliver in a million um, hours of work. Um, we included a significant amount of work to renew um, uh, existing assets, so three kilometres of track were renewed, 12 point ends, uh, 9,000 tons of ballast, which gives you a good indication of the level of work that was done during that phase. Uh, it was all concluded and handed back bang on time on Monday the 30th at 4.20 in the morning to full service into uh, Liverpool Lime Street. As part of that work source, as Pat indicated, uh, signalling control um, was re-controlled over to Manchester Rock, so the modern signalling system kicked in and platforms 3 to 10 uh, became operational. Now just, just as part of the presentation, it's worth, um, I've got two small, very short videos which give a real good indication of the works and 